I've always wondered how could a kid like Michael, who never lived the part, could sing the song as if they knew it, with so much feeling, as if they knew what they were really singing about. But it made me proud that he was able to do that, and it just came natural. So how was he able to elicit such emotion at the age of eight? How was he able to sing about love at the age of eight with such compassion and such feeling? You know, I don't know. And I even know when they went to audition at, um, at Motown, and they had a party, and Michael sang that song, and Mr. Gordy had invited a lot of the Motown acts there, and Smokey was one that was there, and he wrote the song. And he was surprised, too, because he even said that he felt Michael was singing the song better than he was, and he had experienced it in Michael Hatton. So um, it's, it's a thing that I always um, looked at Joe when he was singing, and said, how can he do that? <laughs> We wondered ourselves. Really? Yeah, we did. Do you think he was born with this talent? Well, it had to be, because he was so young. Michael started singing when he was like four or five years old. And um, he just sang with feeling. Tell me about the time when you walked in and saw him, you, you heard him harmonizing. Yes, um, the children, I can't even remember the song they were singing. But Michael wasn't even in the group at that time. And so when they start singing the chorus part of it, and I heard this beautiful harmony, and I looked over in the corner, and it was Michael. Nobody ever taught him to do that. I don't know where he came from. But he just say, he was just able to do it. Probably listening, and he had a perfect pitch, so I guess that's what it was. Where do you think that came from? Because he was so young and he did things, um, his um, coordination and all, it was more, it was never like a young child. It was always like an older person that he just had good coordination. And uh, he was able to dance, able to learn by watching TV. And this is what all kids did back then. And he just picked up things very easily. So, Mrs. Jackson, as Michael's mother and his protector, how did it feel to watch your son become a public figure at such a young age? Um, I kind of felt robbed because um, when we were back in Indiana, uh, the family used to eat together and do everything together. And after they came to California and um, <clears throat> becoming famous and all, they had a lot more to do, and so uh, we didn't even eat dinner together. So most of the time they were in the studio. So the children that was uh, left home, we ate dinner mostly together. I felt that they had separated the family, and so you know, in a way. But um, I guess it takes all that when you become famous. So did you feel like you were not able to protect him? Um. Yes, but his father was with them all the time, at that time. I did, um, would have liked to spend more time with um, Michael and his brothers while they were traveling, but um, sometimes they'd come home and stay a day and have to go back on the road again. And I felt bad too because I know they were working so hard and they were very young, but um, you know, came out good. What did you say to Michael to help him cope with being famous at a very young age? At a very young age, they wanted to be famous, and I know it was something they wanted. So they were spending a lot of time rehearsing, a lot of time um, with choreography. I um, told them together, you see I'm talking about the group, because he was still growing up with the group. Oh, so you, you spoke to them as a group? Yeah. Even though Michael was in the, he was the lead singer, so he was getting more attention than everyone else, and he was 10 years old. Did you ever pull him aside and, and talk to him about what, how his life was going to be after he became famous? I um, 
had told the boys what I could see about famous people, how the fans and how especially how girls were going to be. And I always told them never get the big head just because they were getting famous. And I also had told them when they were back at home too, when they were rehearsing and all of this, you have to really, re and Michael did this all the time because he knew that practice made perfect. And you only get out of a thing what you put in it. And the, he put a lot into what he was doing. Mrs. Jackson, how did you feel when Michael went solo? Okay, when Michael went solo, I didn't feel too good about it because um, I had, at, a couple of years before then, um, a lawyer had called me into his office and told me uh, that I should tell my other children to start saving their money because Michael was going solo. I told him Michael was not going solo because, and that's what they wanted. Well, his, uh, he doesn't need his brothers. This is what he said. I said they need one another. And um, they had already planned his future themselves. Michael didn't know anything about what they were planning. But um, I, didn't, I didn't feel too good about it. But years later, when Michael could make up his own mind, when he went then, he went solo. And did you agree with him then? Yes, I did. Some of his brothers had, was married and all of that, and so uh, But he was still with, his, with the group as a young child, because when he made Ben, the group was still together. Do you prefer him as a solo artist or part of the group? I preferred him as part of the group at that time. And all the time, I wish he was part of the group. Why? But I just, that's how they started. And um, that's how I wanted it to be. And then um, when they did um, the Victory Tour, they just went back together for a while. And I liked that a lot. And when, uh, we had talked about it before he even died that I told him, I said, before I leave this world, I want to see you all together once again, just to do a tour, and I can watch you. And he had agreed to that. Do you think he, he wanted to get back with the brothers at the end? Yes. Yeah. Not to get back as a group, but just to be together on stage one more time. Did you see yourself in Michael? Yes, I did. And Michael would even tell me in a lot of ways, and he would also say to me, Mother, I'm too much like you, even though I try not to be, because I had told him, I said, I don't want you to be like me, because um, I felt that I was too giving, too easygoing and all that. And he was, and that's the way he was. I said, because you're a man and you're going going into business and you need to be stronger, but um, he just tried to be, but it was just something that he couldn't do. He had a Joe. Joe's very strong. His father. I know, I know, but uh, Michael's different. He, even from a little kid, he was just different. He had feelings for other people. I've seen Michael when he was a young boy, would cry when he see the poor little children. Like a good example is when the African kids. Um, was had these big bellies and flies lighting all over them and they were dying from starvation and he would just be crying and he said, Mothers, one day I'm gonna do something about that. He he just couldn't sue. A lot of times I would tell him, I said, Michael, you should sue that person why she and he would always say, Mother, you know we don't sue. Plenty of people sued him <laughs> but that came later, but he never sued people. Never. But he, he got a little tougher when he got, just before he died, he, he sued a few people, but that was it. It took an entire lifetime for him to finally say, I'm going to be strong. Yes, because so many people took advantage of him. And um, he just didn't do too much about it because he didn't like suing and stuff, but he should have.